Thank you, everyone, for joining us for the first session of the uh, Digital Literacies Toolkit track in uh, MyFest. Uh, the presenters today are Nadina Boulmagd and Samah Adil, who are my colleagues here at work, and the three of us have been working on this toolkit together. Uh, but the two of them are leading this workshop. They just put the link to the slides in the chat, and I'll copy it and paste it several times uh, throughout the session. And I'll also put the link to the toolkit itself. I will let them uh, take it away. Hello, everyone. Welcome, we're very happy to have you with us today. Um, it's very nice to see you all. For those of you who are waking up early, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Or if it's in the evening also for you, we're very happy to have you. Okay, so we can get started. Um, and those who trickle in can follow up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce myself and then I'm gonna let Sameh uh, do that. Uh, my name is Nadina Bulmakt. I'm the Senior Instructional Designer at the uh, Center for Learning and Teaching at AUC, at the American University in Cairo. And I'm also an instructor in the Professional Educator Diploma. That's the Graduate School of Education. Um, and Sameh and I work together at CLT. Uh, our main role is to design and facilitate and develop uh, any of the online courses that are being developed at AUC. Uh, one of uh, our role as well, Part of our role is to um, work on this uh, digital literacies toolkit and Baha and I um, are co-leading the digital literacies AUC initiative overall and uh, we were um, we were working on this toolkit together and Sameh joined us recently and she became a very important part of our team. Uh, Sameh, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sorry, I was muted. Thank you so much, Nadine, for the intro. My name is Samah Haydel, and I work as instructional designer as well at the Center for Learning and Teaching here at the American University in Cairo. Uh, Nadine and Maha are my mentors, actually, and I've recently joined the team, such a dynamic team. We're, and as Nadine said, we're working on designing online courses for different departments and school here at the AUC. Uh, I also used to be an instructor for the English language at AUC as well. Uh, and I also worked for the continuing education school, uh, leading and coordinating different uh, programs and uh, online and face to face courses. Uh, I've recently jo joined in the development of uh, the digital literacies toolkit. And today we are going through an exploration journey to uh, tell you more about the toolkit and the main purpose, how it works. And uh, we'll have also a showcase or a walkthrough with Nadine about all uh, the options and the resources that you can have. And also how finally we will end up with how to contribute to the toolkit and give us your input. Thank you everyone for being here today. Those who are uh, waking up uh, very early in the morning or even in the afternoon, uh, welcome on board. And now let's start. All right, so this is our agenda. Samah, you can go ahead and show it all uh, in the same slide. This is what we're gonna be talking about in our session today. First, we're gonna just do a quick uh, roll call, who is here, where uh, you're joining us from, your role and so on. Uh, then we're gonna dive into a digital literacies definition and how we have certain, uh, you know, particularly defined it at AUC and how the, uh, the toolkit was, was created based on those definitions. Um, and that is also going to be a poll and interactive discussion there. Um, and we're going to dive into those different categories that we defined at uh, AUC and how we actually set up the toolkit. Um, then we're going to do this activity about how to enhance students' digital literacies. And we have a couple of different scenarios that we're going to talk about all together. Next, we're going to join uh, the, tool, the, the showcase. Then we're going to show you exactly uh, the toolkit, we're going to walk through it, show you the different features of it, how it was actually developed as an open educational resource. We're going to also give you a chance to explore it together. We're going to have a fun activity there uh, in breakout rooms. And finally, we're going to have a discussion together, a Q&A. I do want to ask everybody, though, if you have any questions as we uh, move through the presentation, if you're having any thoughts, reactions, reflections, uh, please share those in the chat. We will get to them throughout the session and also at the very end. So if it's a longer question that takes a little bit more time and it's going to take us off on a tangent, we might leave it until the end. But I want to assure everybody that all three of us, Maha Sameh and I, have our eye on the chat. So we're not going to leave you with a reflection or a question that's unanswered. All right. 
Okay, let's start with the question of who is here. We're so curious to know more about you and where are you from or what do you do? So we have just listed different categories on the screen. Are you a teacher or a faculty member? Are you a technologist or an instructional designer? Are you a faculty developer or are you a student, whether graduate or undergraduate, maybe a librarian or a researcher or just other? So welcome everyone on board, but let's go to Slido now to do this uh paul very quickly just to know more about you you can scan the code on the screen or you can go to slido.com and add the code clto 2020 2020 sorry 22 and uh so 022 that's clt 022 that's the slide code the slider code so that we can know who is here in the room so i'll just go now to slido and see your results Could you keep the QR code up? It's okay. it's there. Yes. Okay. So results show that so far 75% or almost 80% are faculty, teachers or instructors. Interesting. 44 are designers and technologists. 20% are researchers and 20% are just other. Okay, so if you are other, don't feel excluded. Just type in the chat what you do and why you wrote other. There's there's still about 10 people who haven't answered yet. So. Yes. <laughs> okay. But the majority goes for the teachers and faculty members and instructors. Interesting. Well, okay, welcome on board. So please, for those who are other, just type in the chat and we will welcome you, of course, definitely. Okay, so we have students also. We have faculty developers, researchers. So I like the mix. Thank you all for coming up to this event. And now let's move on to um, how, okay, how familiar you are with, uh, so please type this in the chat as well, and I'll keep an eye on the chat, Nadine and I. And have you heard about digital literacies before? So never heard about it, or maybe heard but don't understand what does this mean? Uh, whether you understand it, but you don't teach or you don't practice, or you're just an expert of digital literacies that you teach, research, practice, digital literacies. So please type in the chat how familiar you are with digital literacies. It's okay, you can just write that you don't know anything about it because this is what we'll be doing today. And it's also okay if you are, uh, if you have good practice of digital literacies or you teach and research digital literacies, that would be also fantastic because we will give you more tips and more uh, space to navigate through the toolkit and contribute with your ideas. Okay, so heard but limited understanding. Uh, no idea about it, somewhat familiar and always learning, interesting. I know, but I haven't dived deep into exploring them, interesting. I teach research and try to practice digital literacies. Interesting, Troy, thank you. I'm fairly certain. Uh, my research teach practice, very good. I understand research is loosely linked. Supposed researcher of DL, but I really feel like I'm learning all the time. We all are life, lifelong learners. I promote digital tools, but need to learn more about digital literacies. Okay, between three and four, interesting. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad that we have this mixture of uh, people who don't know much about digital literacies while we have the experts here. Uh, I'm so curious to know more about your research and practice about digital literacies. So, and this will, will, will come later in the slides today. Interesting. Okay, so let's start with the terms. Uh, what is the difference between skills, literacies, and fluency? And uh, here we need to uh, navigate through the terms and the definitions, sorry, 
my slideshow is not working properly. So we will need to navigate through the term. What is the difference between skills, literacies, and fluency? And this is how we differentiate it. And I would like to start with Maha's uh, tweet. And Nadine, can you take over this part? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I actually, can you move back to the previous slide? Oh, OK. I sure. get feedback from everybody in the group. What do these terms mean to you in the context of digital literacies? In terms of what's the difference between skills, literacies, or fluency, or how are they interrelated? How do they um, combine? Let us know what your thoughts are on this in the chat. Let's give that a minute or two until everybody has uh, responded in the chat, and then I'm, I'm going to reflect. What do these terms mean to you? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to read a couple of these out loud, not all of them. I apologize if I, uh, I'm not going to read yours uh, fully. So I'm seeing a lot related to the skills being a mechanical thing, being the ability to uh, technically do something on the platform or on the computer or you know, using the digital devices. Um, literacies is knowing and thinking critically. I like that. Thank you, AK, for sharing that. And fluency is your part of um, uh, shaping of the subject. Yes, I like that. And fluency could also be, you know, that you're very literate or your literacy of that is quite high. Uh, I like that. So this integration of the disposition, the skills, you know, that you can do something. I'm seeing a lot of the same more or less of the same uh, differences in these definitions. So that's fantastic. And this is exactly how we, we defined it. So uh, I'm going to move through the, the next couple of slides a little bit faster um, because we were planning on spending more or less time depending on the group. So the uh, I'm going to quote Maha's uh, tweet here when she said, saying that any digital tool teaches us digital literacies is like saying a pen or a keyboard teaches us writing. So. We're creating this like this the distinction between the skill being able to write or being able to type or you know hold the mouse and click on certain things, but the literacy behind it is learning how to use it critically, how to use it creatively, how to uh, impart change, um, knowing all of those, making those decisions, being responsible, and so on. Uh, I'm going to move to the next slide and talk about also this driving analogy that's a little bit related. Uh, so the, there's the difference between the technical skill of driving, that's the, the you know, the skill that's related to the liter to, to digital literacies. And you also have the ethics and the rules of driving. So that's another layer there. You have also the infrastructure of uh, the location you're driving in. So first of all, different rules and ethics are dependent on the country. You also have the infrastructure of that particular country. So a lot of these cities or countries have a lot of, um, you know, uh, ramps, a lot of going uphill, downhill, going up mountains and so on. So that's very different than a very urban city that's flat. Uh, and the way to kind of uh, navigate through that is, is quite different. And you also have all of these unspoken or implicit rules or behaviors around driving that are not particularly written down as rules. So all of those things are related to digital literacies because you have you know, you can use the skills, but there's some things that you should and should not say on certain platforms, things like Twitter, uh, platforms like Twitter are quite public, uh, platforms that have, you know, people requesting to follow you like Facebook or, you know, Instagram, if you're, if you don't have a public account, these also have these different ethics and rules and what you can and cannot say when you're in this public sphere. Um, and also we have these unspoken and, and implicit rules and I can give so many examples, but let's move on and see how these unfold. Um, and ideally what we're talking about with digital literacies is this concept of thinking and acting critically and responsibly when dealing with technology. That's more or less this, this feature of, of, of digital literacies. Uh, slide, Samir. Next. Yes, so, so we already 
talked about this, that the concept of solving wicked problems while anticipating new ones is, is related to this critical thinking, uh, this creative thinking about designs and making these informed decisions also with the tools and the platforms. So now that we've established and, and kind of gotten a, a really good uh, working definition that we're going on with here and with everybody else in, in the chat, I want to shift a little bit to talk about what we did at AUC. And this is not in any way, shape or form saying this is how it should be done. The, the, the initiative started about like three years ago. We started having a lot of these conversations on campus and it's very contextual, but we're sharing what we did here that as a possible roadmap, as a possible uh, you know, um, conceptualization of how to have a, a campus-wide initiative if other people on their uh, at their institutions want to sort of follow uh follow a similar roadmap you can of course take or leave what you feel is most applicable because context is different and we're definitely not um you know suggesting borrowing and just implementing uh without contextualization so the first idea with the literacies was uh, the first goal with our uh with our initiative was to develop in a participatory community-led manner this definition of the elements of digital literacy. So that was our, our beginning. And then we established that definition. We have a working model of those elements of digital literacies. And after that, we wanted to map these existing literacies at AUC versus you know, the, the identifying the, the and filling the gaps in those spaces. So we first uh, were looking at students' competency le uh, competence levels, instructors' competence levels, and which courses that are existing or potential that actually integrate digital literacies intentionally as part of the syllabus. Uh, so we mapped that out first, and then we then started to identify where we can fill in those gaps where AUC could further develop digital literacies. And once we were done with that third step where we identified where those gaps could be filled, then we decided to take it by phase. Um, so phasing it out, not like campus-wide all in one go. Samah, can you move to the next one? Right, obviously when COVID happened, that accelerated everybody's digital literacies because everybody was kind of forced to use all of these digital tools and platforms in a way that's critical. So that was, I mean, I, I will say that's one silver lining of COVID that it really helped us with this initiative a lot where we kind of got a lot of people on board using more or less the same terminology. Um, so we started again, like I said, phase it, and we we wanted to focus on the Academy of Liberal Arts, and this is where we have all of our, you know, English language instruction, uh, you know, Arabic, all of those, um, all of those language, uh, language related courses. So we started with ALA, and then we did a like did a round of you know workshops, focused support, intentional support, customized. Uh, professional development for that group and then we decided that for phase two which we have not uh, we're which we kind of are in now where we're broad broadening the focus to the entire university so we did this launch event this last semester where we launched the toolkit where we talked about the the initiative and said hey everybody this is what we've been doing for the past couple of years and we've done all these workshops and these tracks and these consultations and intentional work with one-on-one -on -one one-on-one -on -one with faculty to help them integrate digital literacies more and more in their teaching. And now we're sort of, again, broadening the focus to the entire university. And I want to actually add to this and beyond because we designed the uh, toolkit to be an open resource, an open educational resource. So this is one of the things that we're doing where, you know, we're po posting it out uh, and, and sharing it with the public. We're talking about it and sort of marketing for it. I don't like the word marketing, but maybe sharing it openly uh and and that's that's what we were doing so the output was first of all we did this very first campus conversation where hey everybody what do you think about this and we started talking about what the needs of the community was um and then we took that and created a survey to to get in promoting yes thank you thank you ak um and then we started taking the the, the insights that we got from from this initial campus conversation where nobody has really gotten in the same space together as a community to talk about these literacies. Then we took those insights and created another survey to get more and more insights from those people who are who were also not able to join the campus conversation. So we started gathering a lot more data and a lot more information. 
Next, we, I'm gonna wait for Samah. Samah, you can just show everything on the slide. Yeah, thank you. So, and the next thing we did was we created a, another session, but it was more of an awareness session that was, hey, these are the categories that we've established. And we're gonna talk about those categories in a minute. And we also were educating and, and, and getting awareness um, going about digital literacies and those categories. And after that, the fourth thing that we did, and this was this is still where we are sort of, where we're continuously giving workshops, doing all kinds of professional development about uh, digital literacies, whether it's integrating them, whether it's enhancing the way that their faculty are doing it, um, whether they want to um, critically think about it and possibly change. So all of those workshops that are varying degrees of, uh, of levels, you know, you have your intro level, beginner level where faculty are not integrating literacies all the way to things that are a bit more uh, advanced things like, you know, talking about algorithms, this was the last one and we're talking also about um, social media and how all of that uh, affects digital literacy so that was that's what's been going on and still uh, this semester as well. Uh, and last semester we officially launched the toolkits and we were very happy about that we spent a while creating it. We have uh, Maha and Muhammad on our team. They are from the instructional technology team. They were the ones that actually built it. It's a WordPress site. So they built it, they created the design, they created the layout and Maha and I, oh yes, another Maha, her name is Maha Shawi. Thank you, Maha. So uh, they created the layout, they created the design and everything. And we were populating the, the toolkit with all of these resources that came up either from the community, either from us knowing that a certain faculty member is integrating digital literacy. So we basically just reach out and say, hey, can you just write a very quick thing, a brief about how you're, uh, what, what you're doing, so we can take that as a resource and add it to the toolkit. Or Maha and I actually uh, added a lot of it, uh, a lot um, on the toolkit from our own teaching practice. And when Sameh also joined the team, she was adding from her own teaching practice. So this is a very crowd sourced, open resource and this is essentially what we're really trying to what we're really hoping for that it continues to grow and we also at the end of the session we also want to ask you um if there's anything that you have in mind that you want to contribute either you did it yourself as a faculty member as a teacher even k through 12 uh in your classroom or you were a learning designer or technologist that worked with a faculty or a faculty developer that worked with a, a faculty member to integrate literacies. We also want to invite everybody to contribute. And we especially have a, a session uh, also within my fest within this track where we're literally going to be crowdsourcing for the toolkit. So we're going to all meet together here. We're all going to start thinking and brainstorming of all of those things that you're already doing and how those could be put into um, into the toolkit, okay? Um, and of course, all of the pandemic or related professional development material that we created, anything and everything that we created to help faculty teach online in this emergency remote teaching and learning became naturally part of our digital literacies, uh, you know, both the toolkit and all of these material that we kept promoting and sharing. So that really helped us out with our uh, outputs with the, um, with the toolkit. Now, yes, thank you for sharing. This is the workshop on June 13th. This is crowdsourcing accessibility. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna share uh, the toolkit then where we're going to have these breakout rooms and start thinking about all of, the, um, all, of the, all of those possible things that you can contribute from the, from the wider community. Okay. Thank you, Nadine, so much. Um, before, before I move on to the categories, I would like to say that this initiative was very proactive. It all started three years ago and it was all before the pandemic. However, like it boomed after the pandemic and it's promoted for digital literacies awareness and uh, research and practice during the pandemic. It helped a lot. And thank you guys. I just want to go back to Virginia and her question about who is this tool for? So uh, let me tell you that it's for anyone interested in digital literacies. If you are a teacher, this can, could be promoted in your classroom. It could be added as one part of your course, regardless of the topic or the course that you uh, teach. Also for designers, it's very important to be aware of this. So if you are, I think you are an ID, yes, okay. Uh, instructional designers can also use uh, the toolkit 
to guide them in the journey of creating content, uh, even if it even if it's face to face or online um, content, it would be very helpful for you. So it's for everybody. Actually, you can contribute and you can make use of it. And while we navigate and explore the toolkit, you will find different resources that will be in, uh, of interest for you. So now let's move on to the categories or the, and this part is uh, particularly important for those who uh, are not sure of what are the digital literacies. So here are the five categories that we uh, set. Digital making and know-how. This is number one, digital privacy and safety, digital responsibility, and digital critical thinking, and finally, digital interaction. We'll go through them very quickly just to make sure the concepts are clear for you. And for every resource that we add to the toolkit, we categorize it. So it could be about the digital making, it could be about the responsibility, it could be about both. So um, they, they are used separately or they can be used together. So let me start with the digital making and know-how. And the term lends itself to the concept of being able to produce these types of cre creating, mixing, reusing different types of content. So you can cre create an originally uh, digital content or you can convert your uh, paperwork and uh, traditional work into uh, digital content. So it's about creating content that has a uh, digital content in terms of videos. It could be creating podcasts, any types of visuals, uh, graphics, posters that are um, accessible also for different people to use on uh, online. So this is, um, as we can see here, it's people to with visual impairment, for example, or maybe hearing disability, they still can have access to this. So it's about the awareness of how to make content that is digitally accessible to people with all and different needs. It's also about privacy and safety. And here comes the importance that, that we need to create a behavioral attitude towards what we create online. For example, you need to identify the type of platform that you are going to make use of or uh, to navigate. It's about uh, cyberbullying, for example. So you can research these ideas or you can teach it in your classes to your students. When you ask your student to prepare a presentation, for example, or when you ask them to prepare a video or a podcast, they have to be aware of all these elements okay and also it's about the this creates a digital responsibility to all the users of digital literacies so this should have the mental and the behavioral attitude of digital citizenship and this is the term that we are trying to promote here digital citizenship how to be digitally aware of all these uh factors, awareness when communicating with culturally different groups. And it also helps in maintaining awareness of inequities and distribution of digital access that people can access materials. Here we talk about creating some open access resources, some open educational resources, OERs, such as the toolkit, by the way, it's an OER for everyone, uh, not only in, in AUC or um, in, in Egypt or whatever, anyone in the whole world can use the toolkit and can contribute to it. Moving on, we have also digital critical thinking, and it's not only about the responsive attitude of uh, us or our students, it's also about critically thinking about the habits of uh, digital work, the digi digital information and the media literacy in general. And this pertains to examining the resources, how we examine the resource, how we check its accessibility, its reliability, how it's credible in terms of information. So this creates a habit of, we have to think critically about the digital resources that we have. So that's also another important category. Moving on to the one of the most important categories also is the digital interaction. So we create this in not to exclude people from being around and communicating, but this enforces the habit of supporting each other, being aware of how we interact together online, how to communicate effectively and interact appropriately within a variety of different audiences, how our, our digital products uh, can, can, can be like uh, shareable, how we can communicate over it, how we um, create mediums and different platforms that can foster and help communication purposes and not to exclude anyone. 
So here comes the activity. So um, I, I hope I have clarified all different uh, categories for you. And now we are going to have a very short activity of trying to enhance different multimedia activities in order to, to match them with the digital literacy elements or uh, categories that we have just uh, mentioned. Uh, I'll give the floor to Nadine to move on with this activity. Thank you, Sameh. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna get started with this. Um, we are especially asking you, how can we enhance, can we go back to the question, Sameh? How can we enhance these multimedia activities with digital literacies elements, okay? Um, I wanna ask if everybody's ready, if, every, if, anybody, if everybody could just give me a thumbs up either on camera or from the reaction, uh, that would be awesome. So we can know you guys are ready to start. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so let's get started. The very first one is uh, digital responsibility. So how can we enhance PowerPoint presentations with the element of added or more digital responsibility? You can type in the chat or you can unmute to let us know what you think. How can we incorporate a digital responsibility element from the categories that Sameh just shared into PowerPoint presentations? Yeah, so Virginia is saying I ID photos and sources. Yeah. Yes, I like that. Thank you. That's a really good point. Sharing, Tanya, what do you mean by sharing? Co-creation, getting them to kind of work together, you mean? On the slides? Yes, Trista, you're right. I agree. It's not always that easy. Um, but PowerPoint presentations can have all of these different things. So let's say, let's assume you're already incorporating PowerPoint presentations and getting the students to present something at the end of the semester, adding a little bit more to it uh, from a digital literacies perspective and responsibility would include things like, yes, um, uh, Troy auto transcribing, translating while presenting. I really like that. That's really cool. Fact checking. Images that prompt discussion about current equity issues, introducing themselves through Padlet. Okay, um, the introduction, it is a really good uh, point, but it may also relate to digital interaction more than it relates to digital responsibility. So Zameh, can you uh, show, the, show, the, um, show the slide? Now, the answer to that is not, I mean, this is not the only one thing that is correct. Uh, these are just some ideas. So incorporating Creative Commons licenses, asking the students to incorporate these different kinds of images, knowing about copyright issues when they're adding these images, uh, using alternative text for visuals, uh, thinking and looking at color accessibility guidelines. So anything related to uh, achieving uh, more digital responsibilities for the literacies. Okay, let's go to the next one. Digital making and know-how. How can we enhance PowerPoint presentations with a higher degree of digital making and know-how? Yes, exactly, Jim. Voice over for those with visual impairment. I love that. Thank you. Taking into account accessibility guidelines as above, yes. Have students give feedback on backgrounds, okay. Very important um, suggestions and I like these. Using these tools uh, like voiceover. Yes, these are, uh, these are really nice suggestions. Designing with audience or interaction in mind. Yes, I like that also. Maybe also um, digital interaction, but if there's anything that has to do with creating that interaction in the way that you create, produce the content that may, uh, that may be applicable, AK. Can you, can you show the, the suggestion, Sameh? Okay, so this is uh, using uh, video or voice over PowerPoint, uh, using infographics instead of presentations, uh, creating these posters, these graphically designed or visually designed posters, maybe even changing it all together and creating things like a podcast or an interactive timeline instead of just a presentation. So this is a way to enhance that, that particular um, uh, assignment or assessment method 
with digital literacies. Okay, what about digital interaction? How can we create interaction with the assessment of creating PowerPoint presentations? Jim preempted that with the QR codes and linked to Mentimeter or yes. Slido or Kahoot. <laughs> yes, I like that. Thank you, Jim. And also, um, uh, AK had said something about designing with audience interaction in mind. Comments and feedback. Yes, Slido. Prezi is one way to do it. Um, I haven't actually, Marine, I haven't actually looked at Prezi in quite a while. I'm not really sure if it has an interactivity piece now to it. But if it does, I would I completely agree with you. If it has like a commenting feature or a way to annotate the presentations now, possibly. Uh, it has voiceover. Okay. So that that would work for the digital making and know-how for sure. Yes, thank you, Sybil. That's this is great. I'm sorry, I may not be. Um, pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, but if you put the PowerPoint into Google Slides, students can edit it uh, collaboratively. And this creates the interaction piece. This creates a lot of these different, uh, first of all, it creates collaboration and that's a very important piece, but it also creates that interaction. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, let's uh, share. So these are the ideas that we have in mind. You can share the product on an online tool, just like, uh, uh, wait, let me check. Just like Sybil said, yes. And uh, Padlet, Shahines mentioned that earlier as well. There's also Flipgrid uh, and adding this element of peer feedback. So giving each other feedback on whatever they create. Let's go to another example. Okay. All right. Reflections. How might we add a digital making and know-how element, digital literacies element to the concept of reflections, this assessment of reflections. I'm happy to hear that, Jim, thank you. Yes, I love back channels, by the way. We used to, Maha, we used to use that one all the time until they got discontinued. What was it called? Um, today's Meets? Yes, Today's Meets. We used to use it all the time in our workshops. Using Loom screencasting for reflecting. That's a really nice, nice idea. I like that, yes. I love that idea because it's, it's reflecting and also you're creating something. There's digital making and know-how. Okay, let's show our suggestions here. Uh, for these reflections, they could have these multimedia reflections. So a lot of faculty are now uh, assigning vlogs. So these are video blogs instead of just typing them. They could be uh, e-portfolios. They could be, um, you know, these video reflections on Flipgrid where students um, reflect through uh, recording a video and respond to each other with, um, with videos as well. Another piece that I, another one that I could actually add on here, it could be a blog post, a regular blog post, but one that has a lot of different visual features to it. So we can add this making and know how they could create, uh, you know, tables or visual uh, uh, infographics or something within their reflections. Uh, okay, so digital responsibility. How might we create more digital responsibility in reflections? Use PowerPoint to make hyperlink, choose your own pathway like a museum. Oh, I love that. I really love that. I don't know if that might work so much for uh, reflections. I think that might work for our previous, Troy, that our previous suggestion about uh, the PowerPoints. Instead of creating these PowerPoints, they could be like a blog post with a lot of these hyperlinks. So it kind of ends up like a very visual, uh, interactive uh, Wikipedia-like page. Okay, uh, let's get back to the true responsibility. Cite any sources or codes or images. Yes, we could also add this element of Creative Commons licenses. Anything that has to do in uh, uh, that has to do with uh, referencing correctly, making sure that copyright guidelines are not violated, educating the students about Creative Commons licenses, alternative text, accessibility guidelines, and so on. Yes, reflecting in the open. This is a very big good. Uh, this is a very big and good way to uh, create these digital responsibility elements. Yes, Heather, I agree with that. Fantastic. I'm happy people are um, responding more and more now. Awesome. So, what about digital interaction? How might we create reflections in a way that is digitally interactive under this idea of literacy?
By the way, anybody can come off mute and share out loud if you like. Do it as a group discussion or dialogue. This is great conversations in a shared document. I love that. Also posting uh, uh, reflections in a space that invites comments. So something like blogging uh, or any of the, of the platforms that uh, that have a commenting feature, maybe digital annotations. Yes, AK, thank you for that. That's really good. I love all of these suggestions and they're all perfectly um, accurate and they fit within this category for sure. Collaborative activities like Google Forms. Um, that's a really good idea for interaction. Yes, and I'm not really sure if that works for reflections uh, about how to reflect. You can. Thank you. You can do a Google form that collects their reflections, but shows them back the results. Yeah, yeah, that shows them everybody else's results, right? But how would they interact with each other after they see the results? Ah, uh, that's a good point. Maybe it also means Google Docs. That would be yes. interesting. Yeah. Would Use anonymous Padlet to reflect. I like that. Google Voice to reflect to just the teacher. Voice thread is really good for feedback. I love Voice thread. Thank you for sharing, Virginia. Okay, let's show our suggestion. So these are pretty much everything that you all said right uh the other element that we wanted to talk about with interaction is this inside the class versus a wider audience piece uh you might choose to have these digital interactions or re these reflections and you might choose to get the students to post them publicly on a blog and i know maha does this with her own students where she shares her blog with uh people in her network uh on twitter and she invites people to uh, interact with her students and this element also teaches another piece about responsibility or even critical thinking um, because it it, it involves understanding this concept of writing for a public audience knowing what kinds of things to say and not say in a public audience um, okay finally readings this is our last one we're just going to go through a couple of literacies for this okay All right. So, some, yeah, let's just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, some ways to integrate digital critical thinking with readings is getting the students to, uh, you know, of course, examine credibility of information, um, you know, identify fake news or fake data, examine the author or the content creators' backgrounds and agendas. Uh, and uh, another way to um, create digital making and know how is to have them do things like video summaries. Uh, and these are very helpful. Uh, I think I saw somebody in the chat actually talk about Lumen 5. Uh, and digital interaction uh, it could be collaborative annotations with hypothesis. So they could see the readings. A hypothesis is a tool that, um, that uh, opens annotations collaboratively online. And so you as a faculty could share a reading with the, with the students. You can get them to collaboratively annotate. So they see each other's annotations and can comment and respond to each other's uh, annotations on a reading um, and this also works with pdf files it doesn't have to be an online um, a website so so these are uh, these are some ideas when it comes to reading let me see if i missed anything in the chat here so i should to speed reading because reading from screen yes very good point thank you for sharing that okay moving on now i think we've built a little bit enough hype to now take some time and go through the toolkit. Um, Maha shared the toolkit uh, link in the slide, in the chat. Uh, Samaha, if you can share that. It, oh, great. Uh, Maha also just shared it again. This is our uh, toolkit. We're just going to do a very quick showcase, and then we're going to leave you to explore it on your own. So uh, the toolkit has the home page. It just shows everything that has been recently posted. And you can just there's a rot rotator, and then if you scroll down, you see all of these little thumbnails with a short description of each of the posts. Now the toolkit shows you and gives you resources that are ready to go, and you can integrate them in your own teaching uh, to enhance digital literacy. So you can either integrate them as as they are, or you could uh, adapt them and change them, of course, to your context. Um, and these are divided based on, you can browse both by categories, and these are the categories that we just shared, those five different ones. <clears throat> or you could browse by skills, okay? 
So when you browse by skills, you could choose if you want to teach your students something about oral communication or reading or writing or presentation, you can then browse by these and these are uh, and all of the resources are tagged appropriately so it's going to filter it according to the skill that you want to teach so it's, it's a, just a way to filter it a little bit more instead of browsing through all of them. And we also have a tab about general resources and these are just general that pertain to everything and anything related to digital literacies and that has to do with accessibility copyright creative commons and all of those really uh, common across literacies topics and finally the last button there is for you to contribute we have a feedback one where you can give us feedback about the toolkit uh, or you could contribute a resource if you would like and we really uh, invite you to do that this is going to take you to a google form it's going to ask you some questions, some some questions about your uh, usage of your digital literacies uh, activity or or assessment or resource, and you can just check it. And as soon as we receive that, we go ahead and upload it exactly as the um, as you've uh, as you've uh, provided it. We might reach out to you a little bit uh, for maybe a couple of questions so we can make sure that we put it uh, correctly. Okay. All right. So. Now we want to give you a chance to do this uh, on your own, to um, explore it on your own. And we're going to have uh, a really cool and fun activity. Thank you, Sybil. Thank you guys for sharing that. It's amazing. We're very happy to hear that. But we want you to explore it even more. So keep the link with you as we go into breakout rooms. I'm going to let Sameh tell you exactly what we're going to do in this next game, in this next activity. And then uh, we're going to get started. Sameh, we don't only have about 10 minutes. We have how a lot. I'll create the, the breakout rooms and some. I've already created them. Just let oh. me know how many minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nadine. <clears throat> thank you, Maha. I hope you're enjoying the toolkit. So now it's time for you to, uh, this is a game time. It's a scavenger hunt. So we are going to pair up in breakout rooms. You're going to go through the toolkit, navigate, try all the tabs, look at the resources, how they look like. And then we have, I will send you in the chat before we go to the breakout room, a document with 10 questions that, and you need to go through the toolkit to try to find the answer. So here is the link. I'll put it in the chat for the questions. And in the breakout rooms, you need to go over and try to find the answers. You don't have to write the answers here because after you you go through it in five minutes, you you just have five minutes. We will come back and then we're going to play on Slido uh, a quick game and to see who will get all the right answers. Just five minutes to go and then we come back. Okay. Samah, can you add the link to the toolkit inside that Google Doc as well so that when people have it, they have everything? And I will open the breakout rooms in one minute. Sure, you mean the toolkit link in the document? Yeah. Sure. And it's just that some people left, so I'm just trying to make sure that nobody ends up alone in a breakout room because I'd already created them. So I'm just making sure we have twos and threes. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Okay, do you have any questions? Minutes, right? You're all ready? Yes, just five minutes and then we come back to the main room to answer these questions on Slido. Just take notes of the answers and then we come back. Mahamia is going to be alone because Samah was put in a breakout room with her. No, none of you are in a breakout room. Mia, you and uh, Sameh are not in breakout rooms because you're co-host, so I didn't assign you. The new thing is that you can decide not to assign co-hosts. Thank, co Thank you. Awesome. And then you guys can move around if you want to check on But people. now Hafsa is alone in a room. Okay, we can either move her or one of you go with her. Well, we can't really do that, right? Mia is working on something else. So you, can can move, you can move Here. her to another room. We can yeah, move I'll her. Move her. I'll, I'll move. I'll move. Is there someone else who's on their own? No. No. Shall okay, I'll move her to a room of two. I'll just move Hafsa to a room of two. Okay. Shall we pause the recording? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Back to the recording. It's recording again. But maybe we shouldn't record because if people who watch the recording will now know the answers. Ooh, I had not thought of that. Huh. I mean, unless unless that's okay, obviously, which which it is. I think it Welcome is. Welcome back, okay. everybody.
How was it? Did you get all the questions right? Fantastic. Okay, so Samantha is gonna run a Slido game now. So uh, you, by the way, you only one or both of you, if you want, you can answer the questions on the Slido, but only one of you needs to do it. And you will know if you've answered it correctly. No, but I, I think individually, like this, this, this raises the challenge, you know, <laughs> and the competition, I mean. Okay, let's start. The problem that we have is no, neither of us in our team uh, have our on can get into the Slido. So should we do it in the? You can, yes, go. You can do it in the chat. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now you can go again to Slido, the same code. And you have another QR code on the screen if you want to use your mobile phone, or you can go to slido.com and enter the code CLT022. And now we have the first question. How many DL categories are available on the toolkit? Okay. We're almost out of time. We have to move pretty quickly. Five, yes, let's move to the next one. Okay. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> next, next, yes. Okay, very good. Five. Okay, next. Good job, Jen. Okay, which is not one of the digital literacy categories? Is it digital interaction, digital critical thinking, digital responsibility, or digital awareness? That's pretty easy. Yes, very good. Okay. So Nadine, keep an eye on the chat. See I do, if I do. Right, giving the right it, answer. It. <laughs> okay. Responses. Good okay. job, Jen, again. Okay, what is the social media platform that is most used in different activities on the toolkit? Is it Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok? <laughs> Unfortunately, I would go for the TikTok, but it's Instagram. <laughs> Good point, yes, too. Virginia, you are correct. Very good. Instagram was very popular when we were co collecting these resources. Yes. What resource is not mentioned in the general resources tab on the toolkit? Is it copyright, creative commons, information literacy, or accessibility? And it's... It's information literacy, because yeah. copyright was mentioned with the creative commons. Exactly. Okay, next. Tanya, very we good. Should. Okay. We will have, we have resources for information literacy. It is pending. We will put it up there in a couple of weeks, promise. It's more <laughs> that we have too many and we're having trouble choosing them. Yes, exactly. Not that we don't have any. So what type of materials are not found in the toolkit? This is type of materials that is not there. Is it the graded formative activities, ungraded formative activities, summative assessment or exams bank? And it's obviously exams bank. No, not great. We have a lot of graded formative activities actually. In, and, and you can still adapt. You can, it, if it's a graded activity, you can move it to ungraded or vice versa. Summative can be formative and so and vice versa. So it's the exams bank that we don't provide. Samer, uh, I think we may actually need to stop here because it says that Tanya's room and Virginia's room, they both got up to this point. Uh, okay. So that means maybe everybody else didn't or, and we are out of time also. Mm, um, sorry so for that. Yeah. yeah. Let's, can you guys stay for five more minutes in case someone has questions and then uh, leave sure. them away to ask you questions. You're not on Slack with us. So a lot of people are, are interacting a lot on Slack. So if you want to give them some other way to either through the toolkit or through some other way reach you. Thank yeah. you everyone for joining us. If you have to go because it's exactly half past, you're very welcome to do so. I'm just going to put a link in the chat for giving feedback, please. Uh, feedback on the session for my fest. The feedback on the toolkit, you can do on the toolkit site itself. Um, but please do give us feedback on this session. Um, and yeah, and we're still recording. So let me, let me actually share the thing. link. Let me share okay. the link in the chat very quickly for the feedback. Okay. We hope you're going to contribute to this toolkit, okay? Yes, I'm for sure. your contributions, you can still spend some time exploring more about the toolkit and see if you have different resources that you can add to. And we check your contributions and we contact you, as Nadine mentioned, and then we can post it hopefully on the toolkit soon. 
Thank you so much for the positive feedback. If you have any questions, we're still there for you for five more minutes. Yep. Any questions? Anyone who said they teach digital literacies, we're expecting, we have your names. We, we are saving the chat and then we're gonna run after you so you can <laughs> contribute stuff to the, to the resource. <laughs> I have a question um, and it has to do with, um, and I have taught digital literacies. Um, I noticed that you didn't include anything about the digital environment. So choice of technologies, um, what technologies can do, um, culture, social, some of the things that are not, that really um, affect how you design policies, things like that. And, um, and yet um, most people don't think of it's those underlying literacies that are under there. And I was just wondering if you were if you had thought about that and you decided not to include it or, you know, that would be an area that might be. Yeah, so I, I, so coming up with these particular five categories, we sort of researched lots of different models for digital literacy and, and with the community sort of tried to make sure everything fit under them. I think what you're describing could fit under digital responsibility as well. This awareness of context and politics and policy uh, if you dig deeper into, but we're, just for the toolkit, it was like we we originally had all the deep all the categories and the subcategories, and then that would mm -hmm. drive people who are new to digital literacy is crazy. Uh, so I think that's why. Does it make sense that it would be under digital responsibility, like a nuanced application of it? It makes sense to me. It also makes sense for it to possibly land under interaction about how people interact with each other in those spaces, uh, possibly. Right. Okay. I just know from the work that I've done with um, digital exchanges that that's always the big problem that we have when we're designing, working between two different universities, working between different cultures, the restrictions that we have on technologies. I mean, even me today, I know part of the problem with me getting on Slido is that I'm working through my university. Um, through their program and they have really, really high firewalls because they've had trouble in the past. And so for me to get on anything, it usually takes about 10 extra minutes. Um, I mean, really, if it's a new technology. So um, so I'm, I was just curious about that. So, and Thanks. yes, it does make sense to put it into either interaction or responsibility. Maybe something could be put in a description there that would include that. <laughs> yeah, of course. There's all there's a brief to all of the um, all of them. All of the resources have you know a brief description, and they also have all of these you know templates and tools that could be used. So yeah, you could choose more than one, as Samah also mentioned in the uh, in the chat. Thank you, Virginia. Anybody else have any questions, thoughts, wonderings, reactions, concerns? Hi, I'm wondering, are there any events that have been scheduled in the future that also explore the toolkit? Or maybe is there an opportunity to work with a school to talk through their own needs and how this might relate to them? That would be something that emerges out of my fest. So if you want something for your own institution and you'd like to request that kind of conversation, I think we'd be very happy to do that. We've also recorded this session and you're gonna get a recording of it. And then there are two more sessions uh, with the Digital Literacies Toolkit track. The next one is on the 13th, I think, where we're crowdsourcing accessibility. So we're gonna have to introduce the toolkit like for five or 10 minutes in case people don't know it and then spend time crowdsourcing for it. And there's a third one, which is about how it's been developed on WordPress. So if you want someone to know how to develop an open resource on WordPress, there's that. Uh, and then the fourth option is in August, we have a encore. So if people vote for, oh, this is a session we want to have again because we want to bring people to it and we're going to have our colleagues register for August of MyFest, then we can uh, try to do that. So that's a lot of options for you, Joe. And also, Joe, feel free to reach out to us. You can email us directly, uh, Maha Samehanai. And if you'd like to, we could just like meet one-on-one, -on -one, hear your 
needs out here what you're talking about and maybe we can talk about and think about how to contextualize certain resources uh, and see how we could be of uh, further support. Thank you so very much. Uh, so the, the, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be officiating a vow renewal. So I'm not going to be able to attend those wow. events, but I really like, uh, I hope the encore happens. And I may be reaching out to you guys to talk this through after I talk with some of my colleagues. Great, no problem. Our emails are there. Uh, I just typed them in the chat and they're also on the last slide on the slide deck. I'm not seeing them on the chat. No, I sent them a bit earlier, mine and some. Uh, but they're also okay. on the last slide in the, um, in the slide deck. So if you already have a link to the slide deck, they're on the last slide there. Yeah, I stole a copy. I hope that's okay. Fantastic. Oh, absolutely. They're yeah. there. That's why they're there. Yeah. <laughs> I, Creative I, Commons I, license. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it, if I could ask one more question, uh, do you have any strategies for engaging students in these conversations about digital literacies? We have a group of students that support academic work or the digital, the use of digital tools for academic work. And I, often the student voice gets left out. Do you have strategies or can you point me in the direction of things to consider to make sure that the student voice gets heard when we're considering these things? Our, our very first event, the campus conversation we had, uh, had students in it, like maybe a third of the people in it were students. Now to get students to come to an event on campus, <laughs> it's probably easier if they're in a class with someone who's doing something related to digital literacies or interested in it and they bring them. So committee members, in the end it was actually mostly my class, but maybe another committee member brought in a few students mm -hmm. and designing it at a time that you know a lot of students don't have things or during the class time and they come to the session instead. Uh, we also had Nadine, the data detox kit, which we never actually used properly, but this is, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, the, the, it's linked, by the way, on our site, data detox kit. It's yeah. a site that, you know it? I, I, I know it by the title. We, we also yeah. do, uh, we do a detox in uh, January and February as well. So I think okay. there's some relationship there. So the data detox kit is a website, but it also has downloadable resources that you can download and post up like an exhibit in your library or something. And so if it's a space that students already go to, then you can have the exhibit and have someone around to answer questions and so on so that students get exposed to it. And it's, it's create, a little bit creative and interesting. You could partner with them and they could actually send you some physical stuff, but you can also work without them and just use what's already freely available on their site. So that kind of thing could be interesting as well. But again, I think we could talk a lot more because it looks like you have a big project in mind. And we have one of our students actually here today in the, who was never my student, by the way, yes, that is here. Um, he's a student it's, at our university. It's just another one, one last thing that I want to share about this. Uh, initially, when we talked about this, we wanted to also have a student facing side of the toolkit, but we decided yeah. to have the entire toolkit just face everybody and incorporate a student, uh, you know, a segment in all of the different resources where the faculty members intentionally write something that is directed towards students that explains the connection between this particular resource or assessment or activity and digital literacy. So how does doing this activity enhance your digital literacy as a student? So that is clear. It's very well articulated in all of the resources that we shared. And another thing is that for your context, you can, if you have this group of, of uh, students already working in this digital, uh, for, for these digital um, support, you could also ask them what are in general those general resources that you would find more useful for creating any of these resources or any of these um, activities or assessments. And right. you can share those in the general resources. Yeah, I, I, so, so thank you for sharing that and for pointing out the data detox. We have a group of students that are planning a crypto party for um, incoming students uh, slightly post orientation. So that's good. That's gonna be a helpful resource to consult okay. as we're putting that together. Yeah, and please, if you have any feedback about it, if your students have feedback about it, make sure to ask them to fill out that feedback form so we can see that as well and possibly see how we could redesign it for that student facing component as well. Joe, yeah. what's your institution? Okay. Uh, Middlebury in Vermont. Oh, well, with Amy Vermont. Collier. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that how I know you? I've met you, right? Yeah, we, we've had one or two conversations over Zoom. Uh, your Maybe name was so no. familiar. And I was just, yeah. I couldn't put my finger on it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And, and yeah. I, you know, in and out of conversations mm -hmm. at various times. Uh, so I've taken over the management of the student group. Uh, may, maybe if there, if you have students, if we could do a pilot of the crypto party 
for uh, for some people who may give some some good feedback uh, once we have it put together. They're going to be working. Are you going to do the crypto online or in person? We'll probably do it in person for the incoming uh, freshmen. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. we may practice it online because we do have students that participate virtually and we have the Institute out at Monterey and those mm -hmm. students like to come to these events. So we have to be yeah. prepared for both. Yeah, cool. Really cool. Thank you, Sama. I, 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 I've been in Middlebury for 17 years and geez, how many conversations do we have where the student voice doesn't get heard? Um, and so I'm trying to uh, trying to make that happen in some. Thank you for raising this up, Joey. Thank you so much. That's a great point that we should always take into consideration because students are always like uh, the thing that we we're we're doing all this for them. They are tech savvy, but they are not literally aware of how digital literacies affect their work, their production. So we try to inc incorporate this all for them actually at the end. So thank you for raising this and thank you for being a very strong student advocate. <laughs> thank you and and, uh, and thank you for having this session. This was extremely helpful for where we are right now in the program. And awesome. sorry for taking so much time here after the meeting, but th this no, is okay. for me. We're hope very happy. Helped, hope it's helped other so people. Much. Thank you. All thank right. you everyone. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Looking Bye. forward to seeing you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.